Good day, good evening, everyone. I'm Allie Morrison. This is your Yen and Zen practice. So this is a practice of uh, working with the meridian and the energy pathways in the body and incorporating them into um, both a slow and gentle hatha yoga as well as a yin yoga posture release practice. And our focus tonight is inhaling uh, so that it becomes like a nourishing energy food for us. And then and like the sun and then exhaling as if it were rain and we're just simply releasing it, letting it go so that it can go back into another cycle of being uh, reused. Take a comfortable seat and fold your hands together in front of your heart as you close your eyes for centering. Take a full deep breath in and exhale, release your day. Align yourself to that central channel of your spine from the pelvic floor between the sit bones to the crown of your head. Trace this internal plumb line With every inhale, the inner body becomes more radiant, expanding the rib cage three dimensionally. With every exhale, release with ease naturally, letting it fall the, like raindrops to the ground. Grow your breath with each cycle so that the inhale in a sensory way feels more full. And keeping that fullness and that length internally, each exhale is just a gentle and natural emptying out. Two more breaths like this. Filling not only the torso, but down into the legs, into the shoulders and arms. The purpose of yoga is to connect to our higher self and to know that our higher self is comprised of simply finer life trons, finer energies in the same energy that is within the body, that the pulsation of the breath moves this energy, both connecting us to the body as we inhale and to the spirit as we exhale. May all beings be happy, free from suffering, free from the root causes of suffering. May we learn to see the divine in all things, pure and impure, aware and unaware. Deep breath in. Oh. Bow your head down to your heart, relax your shoulders. Then bring your hands down to your lap, lift your chin and open your eyes. Okay, you're gonna come onto your mat. We'll start on our hands and knees. When you're into table position, spread your fingers wide. Turn your toes under and brighten your whole body with the life force energy. Draw your shoulder blades towards your spine, arc your back, lifting your tailbone, and then looking up through the upper palate of the mouth and lifting with the center of the throat. Take a full deep breath in, and then exhale and clear the energy. Release, coming into cat pose, navel to spine as you push the floor vigorously away. Now inhale and look up. And the arm bones are plugging in deep into the shoulder sockets. And exhale, push them away. 
rounding the upper back. Again, inhale and look up. Pause, and really allow that uppermost part of your sacrum to move deeply inward to the lower back. As you inhale fully and exhale, lower belly tones as you arc and round the spine. Last one, inhale, look up. And exhale to round. Now, come to the tops of your feet, take your knees wide, lower your hips down to your heels, keep your arms stretching forward and your gaze lifted. Push your hands down as you lift the armpits and let them float up, lifting the lungs, letting it fill with the breath. And then exhale, just softly drop the head down, keeping the arms and the armpits lifted. Two breaths here, deep, extended, child's pose, balasana. Now with your next inhale, slowly lift from the center of the throat and lift the head, walk the hands in, draw your knees together, walk your hands alongside of your hips, maybe just behind where your toes are, some of you may be able to lean back more fully, flattening the hands, straightening the arms as you draw the shoulder blades towards the midline. You open up the side of the lungs. Think of the three dimensionality of the rib cage and the lung organs as you open up to the side of the right and left chest. Then move the center of the throat back. Keep some tone in the back of the neck. And then inhale to lift the heart to come up and exhale, downward facing dog. Turn your head a little left and right. Sway your hips a little left and right. Lift up onto the balls of both feet. And then you're gonna swivel the feet. You're gonna swivel the heels over to the left and set them down as you lift your left armpit and push through your right hand. So you get a lot of length there in the side of the body. Now, and you'll come back to center. Lift up with the heels here on the balls of the feet. This activates the kidney one healing point in the center of the feet. Now drop both heels over to the right. Lift your right armpit away from the floor as you draw the shoulder blade towards the spine and push through your left hand, lengthening the left side of torso. Now inhale, come back to center. And exhale, push hands and stretch back the heels. Now walk forward, come to the top of your mat. And halfway lift as you extend the spine, lifting the heart, stretching the heart beyond the toes, lifting your kneecaps to firm them, pressing down with balls of feet. And exhale, bow forward. Inhale, rise up. Stretch your arms up and hands into the heart. We'll do slow sun salute to begin our practice. So inhale, stretch up. Exhale, bow forward. Step your right foot back and place your knee down on the mat. Now inhale, stretch both arms up. Lift the heart here, pushing the heart forward to make length in the spine. Now right hand down as you twist. And then both hands down so that you can bring your left shoulder inside your front knee and perhaps drop your head to the mat. Downward facing dog as you step back. Lower to your knees, your chest, your chin. Pause with weight on the sternum, weight on the thymus gland, softening through the heart, softening behind the sternum. Now inhale for cobra posture. You'll lift the, the chest up, stretch back through the legs, lift your kneecaps up, but push your pubic bone down. Now, downward facing dog. 
right foot forward, back knee down. Stretch both arms up. Lift with the heart, push the heart forward, belly in as you lean back. Now, left hand down, right arm up, little twist, and then both hands down. Drop your head, belly into spine. It's just like cat pose. Draw your head down towards the mat. Now, downward facing dog. Down onto your knees, your chest, your chin. And now inhale for cobra, lifting the chest, pushing the pelvis down, dragging your hands back towards your pelvis as you lift your kneecaps and stretch up. Now downward facing dog. Pause here. Spread your fingers and toes and spread prana throughout the body. Knowing that with every inhale, as you direct your mind to the inner self, the inner soul, it has a quality of light, as a quality of eternity, as qualities of radiance and steadfastness. So distributing prana, exhaling waste product. It just falls. Now walk your feet forward. So you're now at the top of your mat and halfway lift. Exhale and bow forward and inhale to rise. Take your hands into your heart. Again, inhale and stretch up. Exhale and bow forward. Right foot back. So you're gonna put your knee down, stretch both arms up. Now lift your heart, just pull the heart through, take your armpits back. Right hand down for the twist. Both hands down for the fold. Lift up on your lower belly here. No matter how far you're folding forward, close the pelvic floor. Push your elbow tips forward. Now downward facing dog. Lowering down onto the knees, the chest, the chin. Being reminded, you keep the front of the shoulders, the front of your arms lifted away from the floor. Now inhale, medium or low cobra. Push your hands down. Drag back from your hands to your pelvis. Lift your kneecaps up and push the center of the throat back. Now downward facing dog. Now step your right foot forward. Put your back knee down and lift both arms up. And being reminded to lift the heart, hollow out the armpits as you draw them back. Now, left arm down, right arm up. And both hands down as you bow. Navel into spine, pelvic floor closing. Push elbow tips forward as you lengthen the side of the body. Now, downward facing dog. And lower to knees, chest, and chin. And inhale for low or medium cobra. Pushing hands down, dragging them back. Pressing toenails down, upper palate back. And then downward facing dog. Pause here. Relax your diaphragm on your back body. You need to pull your chin like Jalandara Bandha towards the shelf of the chest. Hollow your armpits as you lift them up. Draw your shoulder blades towards your spine and now push towards the mat. So you feel the heart's energy expanding into the limbs or the arms, into the pads of the hands. Now walk your feet forward, come to the top of your mat and halfway lift. Exhale, bow. Inhale to rise. And hands to your heart. One more, dropping the tailbone down. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale and bow. Right foot back, put your knee down. Both arms up. 
Remember, armpits coming back, heart moving through and lifting up. Now, right hand down for the twist. Lift your lower belly a bit more this time so you can turn and twist with the fullness of the torso towards your inner left thigh. Then keeping that tone, bow forward. Squeeze your buttocks and push your elbow tips forward. Now downward facing dog. Lower to your knees, your chest, your chin. Pausing here. Now, if your shoulders are more warm, your neck is more warm, roll along the jawline. Move carefully here, press the chin downward. Come back to center, lift the shoulders up, upward facing dog. Lift the kneecaps, the pelvis, press your hands down, drag them back towards the pelvis, and then move the center of the throat back, the center of the upper palate back. Now we're facing dog. Right foot forward now, and both arms up. Hollowing out the armpits, you might bring your hands forward to help you bring the armpits back. And then push the heart through. Now left arm down, right arm up for the twist. Pause so you can pull the belly in a little bit more, drawing the right edge of the waistline back, the left edge of your waistline forward towards the right inner thigh. Now keep that tone as you bow forward, head to the mat, push your elbow tips forward, and then lift up to down dog. Lower to your knees, your chest, your chin, and inhale for up dog. And exhale for down dog. Pause, lift your gaze. Lift your armpits. Move your upper back in as you draw your shoulder blades towards your spine. Draw your lower ribs in as you attempt to look towards your heart. Push into your hands from the base of your heart as you lengthen into the spine and downward facing dog. Now walk your feet forward. Come to the top part of your mat and halfway lift, lift your heart. Lift your lungs and stretch them. Spine long, kneecaps lifting, balls of feet pressing. Take your hands to your hips with your elbows high so your shoulder blades are squarely on your upper back. And now press down as you lift with the center of the throat to come up. Stretch both arms up. And hands into the heart. Okay, we'll do the arm meridians. You stretch both arms out to the side and spread your fingers, fan them out and step the feet a little wider. Now thumbs up and you're gonna rotate from the head of your arm bone so that you're gonna turn your thumbs back and then also squeeze and open it up so it's in a wide V. This is a fascial stretch for the lung meridian. And we're opening up lung and large intestine meridians just as a, a seasonal practice for um, autumn that we're kind of technically still in for another couple of weeks. So stretching through the center of the sternum, the lung organ itself that's fascially connected to underneath the collarbone, across the shoulder, and then down into your thumb. Take a deep breath in. And now exhale, release. Bring your arms alongside of you. You're gonna point your right index finger out to the side, back and down to the back edge of your mat. Your left arm will be alongside of you as you turn your gaze now to your left. Bring your chin down to the shelf of your chest. Now really stretch there from the right shoulder joint to the right index finger, across the shoulder, the neck, the upper, lip even to your opposite nostril. This is the pathway, the superficial pathway of the large intestine or colon. Keep your upper back strong as you draw shoulder blades in the spine and expand the back of the lungs as you breathe and also broaden your upper back area. 
Now inhale to center and release. Left side, so index finger points back and down. The face turns to the right and the chin draws down to the armpit. So really stretch, make the left arm strong, reach through the bones. Now feeling perhaps a stretch here and you can turn the arm as, as need be, but this is coming up from the index finger and crossing to your opposite nostril. This is part of the pathway of release of physical waste product in the body is through large intestine, even through lung physical waste product like carbon dioxide. And this is part of metal element, being decisive, deciding what to keep, that which is nourishment, that which is waste, what to release. Now inhale back to center and release. And now you're gonna bend both hands, stretch outward, take your feet wide at the same time. Now expand the heart here, hollow out your armpits and draw the outer part of your shoulder blades back and in towards the spine. With your lungs and your ribs, also breathe into your upper back and expand that area. So there's a pulsation, I'm both drawing in and expanding out, just like there's a pulsation of breath. Now spread your fingers, push through the center of the palm of the hand, reach out towards other beings with hearts. Expanding the front and the back and the side of the heart. Now give your wrists a little turn. It's gonna feel really good. And then stretch both arms up, take a big breath in and exhale hands to the heart. Take your hands onto your hips now. Wing your elbows back, almost as if you could get them to disappear behind. Uh, the side uh, lines of your torso and your body. Bring your thumbs so they're right um, level with the top of your sacrum. You feel those two bony knobs. Push these two bony knobs forward, drop your chin down to the shelf of your chest and wing your elbows back. This starts to work into triple burner with meridian, but it also helps open front of hips. Make legs strong. Press feet down, draw them up like roots into the pelvis. Now lifting up on the pelvic floor, push down through the bones of the legs back into the feet again. Keep your chin moving towards the shelf of the chest. Keep your elbows moving back. And then inhale, lift with the heart to come up and exhale to release. All right, step your feet together. Last one, you'll reach the arms out to the side. Turn your palms down, reach behind you, and you can either clasp your hands together, your wrists, your forearms, or for some of you who can bring the palms together for reverse namaste. This helps open up small intestine meridian. So you'll press the hands into the back. You'll wing the elbows back behind you. You'll draw the center of your throat back. Drop your tailbone and press down into the feet, lift kneecaps, lift your spirits, lift your lungs or heart, lift through the crown of the head. Now step your feet a little wider than shoulder distance apart. And now turn to your left, angling your back foot in strongly. Inhale as you lean back, making the back leg even stronger. And then exhale as you come forward, press the ball of the front foot even stronger. As you come forward, you can stop at any point uh, in this. It's really a continuum and you can stop anywhere that's working for you. Squeeze your legs, keep your pelvis steady and to come up, lift your throat and your upper palate, lift your belly and inhale, rise up. Now turn to the other side. If you need to switch your, um, your Hands in any way, I'm looking at the body, but I'm thinking about the hands. So hands push inward, wing elbows backward. Inhale as you lift, you can lean back. You'll feel a lot of weight on the back leg. You want that buttock strong. Now exhale, come forward. Now push a lot of weight into the front foot, particularly the ball of the foot. That will keep you 
from hyperextending the knee as you come forward and you lower down. Parshvottanasana. You can drop your head, bring your head to the knee for three, two, one. And to rise up, lift the center of the throat, the upper palate of the mouth, lift your low belly and now inhale, rise up and turn to face the front. Okay, unwind. Give your wrists a little shake and then step your feet together. Stretch both arms up and you're gonna hold on to your uh, left elbow here. See if you can bring this behind the head. You're gonna stretch up through the left side and join your legs together. Take a deep breath in and now exhale, side bend over. Now, if this doesn't work, here's what can happen. You can just bring this window in front of your face, right? Be nice to your shoulders. Okay, those of you who have the abilities, if you can um, you know, play around to see what it takes, you have to hollow your armpits back. You'll have to drop your tailbone down. Push your hips into the side plane. Now inhale to come up and exhale to release. Side two, lift right arm up and you're gonna hold up the elbow, the forearm, wherever you can get it, upper arm bone. Now lengthen the side of the body, push your hips to the right and lean to the side, join your legs together. Lift from underneath the heart, drop your tailbone down, opening up the whole side body. When they come out, inhale, lift with the heart. And exhale to release. Okay, meridian lines in the lower body. We'll start with the tops of the feet. Connect the front of the legs. Now use your fists here lightly in the front of the hip joints. Now stomach is strong. Walk all the way up the torso. And make sure you're tapping here on your collarbones on top of them. Maybe even behind them, you can get your finger pads to curl inward, right on that stomach point behind the collarbones. Come up the front of the throat, under the jaw, up underneath the eyes, right on your cheekbones. Awakening digestion, tonifying digestion, making us aware of stomach organ. Now, back down the body. Grab second toe, that's your stomach pathway. Now for the side body, this is gallbladder. Start at your side of your ankles. Bring up your IT band. Use your fist when you get to the side of your hips. We're moving quickly through this portion of our practice. Now use your hands on your torso, obliques, make them toned. Use your knuckles here onto your ribs, reaching as back as far as you can and as high into the armpits as you can. Now you do the tops of your shoulders with a hard fist. both sides. Finger pads on the side edges of your neck. So wind up on this bone behind your ear and wrap around the side of your head towards your temples and the outer corners of your eyes. Wrap back around. Now tops of the shoulders again. Use your knuckles here. Walk your way down your hips, IT band. Fourth toe, let's give it a squeeze. Now last one, use a fist at your Achilles, back of the heel, back of your calf. Take your time. Be tough tissue, or we're just waking up the superficial aspect to these energetic lines. All the energetic lines have superficial 
and deep aspects. Lightly on the back of the knees, then more pressure to the hamstrings. And you'll come up to standing. We'll do buttocks. Right onto the sacrum itself, including the SI joint, the coccyx, your lower back area. And this is where, depending on you, you reach as high as you can towards kidneys, the back of your diaphragm, your adrenal glands, back of liver, back of heart, back of spleen. Now upper back. And then finger pads to either side of the neck and you'll come up, 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 down ahead. Come down the forehead, eyebrows. And then reverse our steps again. Okay, upper back. Kidneys and adrenal glands. Walking down. Sacrum. Getting the buttocks. I know you can spend probably more time in the lower back. Okay, you can do that on your personal practice. Come down. Hamstrings, back of legs. Grab that baby toe. And there it is. Inhale, come up to standing. So our first yen posture we'll do tonight, you'll need a block for that. So grab a block and come down onto your mat. It's gonna be in this orientation. And we're going to use it here on the side of your scapula. So place it there very near the armpit. Now, when you lie on it like this, you'll put your elbow down. You can prop your head up. And then uh, stabilizing the block, lift and move your hips down away from the block and pause. Now, for some of you, this is going to be very tender. You can continue to move your legs in a way that helps you stretch and lengthen out your side body. And this is very powerful for opening up the side body. You'll hear me in so many practices to lengthen your side body. We want to lengthen the latissimus muscle. We want to lengthen and lift the ribs up to make not only the the spine longer, but to create more space in the abdomen. So this is release for outer shoulder. You can turn your face away if that feels good. You can have your face in neutral, or if you need to rest hand on forehead looking down. First yin posture. Feel free to close the eyes. You'll slowly start to feel this release happening. It's not only working on latissimus dorsi, which is a large muscle of the back and side body, it's also working directly on teres minor and teres major, the muscles of your rotator cuff that are located at this lateral scapular area. Now, if it feels right and you wanna like roll forward a little bit or roll back a little bit, if you find an exquisitely tender um, area, which is very normal, you may encounter a trigger point or an exquisitely um, tender area. It's uh, located within the fascia and the muscle fibers. You can hang out a little bit longer there. shouldn't encounter any um, circulatory structures that might make your hand go numb. All right, so if that's the case, you can always extend your arm forward. That may be helpful. You can always drop your head. Just a lot of times dropping the head can crunch on the brachial plexus. So in a lot of ways, you'll usually feel better if you keep the head propped up.
Okay, you got three more deep breaths here. And now to come out of the position, you'll release holding of the head. You can bend the knees and draw them in and then carefully, slowly come up. I'll do side two. Side body stretch for the shoulders. So block is up and you'll place it there very near the side of the chest, armpit area. You're gonna bend your elbow to support your head. And now spend some time here, moving your legs, moving your pelvis away from the location of the block so you can lengthen. You do indeed um, expect to find this side bending quality to your spine with the lower ribs very slowly as they stretch out, starting to move towards the mat. Now we're gonna be here for a couple of minutes, just as we did on the other side. So if it's tender, and oftentimes the left side can be tender because the wiring, the neural wiring of the left side and the left shoulder is uh, designed to draw forward. It's designed to protect the heart. It's part of the physical mirroring um, of just survival behavior. And so you may notice the sides more tender. Can you send your breath there? Can you be patient? And part of this patient is going to arise from you being kind of perfectly positioned. So if you're not comfortable, or let's say you have a wooden block, and so the wooden block is really uncomfortable or you have a foam block that's really, really firm, just drape a towel or a blanket just over these edges of the block before you come into it, just to soften kind of the edges of the block and how much it, it may be digging into uh, the rotator cuff tissue or the latissimus tissue. Now we're here for a few more rounds of breath. And again, you may wanna release your hand. You may wanna roll forward and back just to expose some new tissue right, to this stretch, to this exquisite release you may be feeling. Moving slowly thoughtfully and with a quality of inner listening. What's that pulsation, right? You feel kind of tenderness and then it slowly subsides, right? It pulses down into something as it releases, softly releasing. Now release. And you'll inhale and come up, slowly come up. Place your hands into a table position with your block located behind the level of your wrists, just underneath your chest. Walk your knees back as far as you can, look forward. Now lift your armpits up, draw your shoulder blades in towards your spine, your ribs away from the floor, and now push into the hands. Let you come back and place the forehead on your block. It's going to feel so good just for a minute. Release tension in your jaw, your mind. Now, if that feels good, you want to try for more. Touch uh, with your toes tucked under. Lift up into a very deep version of supported downward facing dog with your head on the block. The head can be at any level. You can use two blocks. You can place the block on your more uplifted uh, uh, level, right? You've kind of got three levels to the block. Now breathe deeply and feel deeply. 
Hands press down, armpits lift, shoulder blades draw in towards the spine. From the base of the heart, which is the upper diaphragm, push towards the hands. Free the diaphragm from the pericardium. Breathe space and into that deep internal space just below the heart, just above the diaphragm. Now carefully lower to your knees and you're gonna stretch out along side your right side of your body. Stretch your right arm all the way forward. You're gonna bring your body into one long continuous line in line with your mat, in line with the center of your mat. You can even bring your head down towards your arm as you lengthen the side of the body. Now, you're gonna bend the right elbow and prop the head up. You can turn the head away from the elbow, press the elbow down. Now, bend your top leg, reach your arm to the inside and grab the foot. A nice hip opener and a balanced posture. You wanna find yourself balanced so that your hips are stacked upon one another. You don't wanna roll onto your buttocks and roll back. So, make your bottom leg straight and strong. You're gonna press the pinky toe edge of your foot down into the floor so you can create some stability. From there, we're gonna straighten your top leg. You can use your block for this. You can move slowly here. And you slowly, slowly, slowly reach it out. This is Anantasana, the endless pose. If you confirm both of the kneecaps, press your right elbow down. Press your right foot down. Turn the left hip deeply in the socket, squeezing the buttocks for a three and two and one. And so bend your elbow, uh, bend your knee rather, and bring your arm now. Check it to see that your arm is on the outside of your leg, outside of your knee. You're gonna point your toe and grab your foot in a different orientation and now roll onto your belly. So that your thigh comes down ready for Ardha Bekasana. Slide your elbow in, shift the orientation of your hand. So you're holding the big toe side of your foot and then bend the elbow, lift it up and pull the heel in towards the buttock. Keep moving the head of your arm bone back, moving the shoulder blade in towards the spine. Move your shoulder blade down your back as you lift your heart and you drag your right forearm towards your pelvis. You're here for three. One, two. And one, and now release. Okay, so we'll do side two. And I'll turn around so you can see me. Roll onto the left side of your body. Make your body straight. Slide your left arm forward. Walk with your fingertips. How far can you walk your fingertips away from you? How much can you stretch your body long, making it more narrow? Make it more into a straight line on the center of your mat. Then you're gonna support the head. Press your left elbow down and turn with the head so you can turn away from you. This is a good time to see if you've got your hips stacked. Oftentimes we're leaning forward or we may be leaning back. So flex the feet, press the bottom foot down. You're gonna bring your right arm to the inside and grab a hold of the outside of your foot. Pause here. This is a good um, place. If, you, if you're new to this posture, this is a place to practice your balance. Hang out here. 
Otherwise, straighten the leg, reaching it up, firming the kneecap, turning the right hip in the hip socket deeply so the buttocks squeeze, pressing that bottom leg down. This is the endless pose and it's, uh, it's uh, named for uh, Vishnu's couch. It's also called Vishnu's couch pose um, because this deity, um, he reclines upon a serpent. That is his, quote, his couch. And so this serpent is very slowly but endlessly uh, moving and you can feel that deep movement to this posture, that deep and subtle pulsing and recalibrating Recalibrating your balance. Then you're here for three. And two. And one. I know slowly bend, but this time your arm is gonna come, as you can tell, to the outside of the leg. And you're gonna point the toe and now bring the thigh down so it's in line with the other thigh and you come right onto your belly, supporting yourself with your front forearm. You're gonna turn the back hand, lift the elbow, turn the hand, and now draw your heel towards your buttock. This is Arda Bekasana, the half frog. Now move the top shoulder back, your upper back in. Drag your forearm towards your pelvis and lift through the center of your throat up into the center of the mouth. And you're here for three. And two. And one. And release. Okay, slowly come up into table position. And walk your knees in, turn your toes under, downward facing dog, push back, drop your head. Now look forward, step your left foot forward, place your right knee down. I'm gonna slowly come up. We'll do a twist now. If you wanna even shorten your stance, stretch your right arm up. Make length along the body as you turn a bit through the lower belly and move your elbow outside of your front knee for a deeper twist. This should be a dense, compacted feeling that's happening in the lower belly. I'm going to turn so you can see this other side to the posture. Move your left hand and place your thumb into the crease of your hip as you push it downward towards the mat. This will allow you to twist maybe with um, a little more thoroughness, maybe with a little um, more tone in the belly or more tone in the hip. Now this hand can always go to the floor, your right hand. As you're twisting now, stretch from underneath the heart, up into the thymus and thyroid glands, stretch towards the crown of the head. Really good, now carefully release. Come back to center, bring your hands down and you're gonna walk your back knee back as far as you can. Just do what you can tonight. Bring your front arm to the inside. You can come down for lizard. You can come down into a slits pose. Do what works for your body tonight. You can bring this arm around. This may feel really good. You can drop your forehead down. Let this be a pose of repose. Try 
Drop your head. Belly is in. Let the breath move freely on the back body. So the back body, and just like would rain would just fall off and roll off the back body. It's rounded and relaxed. That's what you're doing now. The exhale just rolls off the ribs. Two more breaths here. You slowly lift your head and walk your hands in and walk your back knee in and then move yourself directly into table position. From there, step your right foot forward. Come on up. Like I said, you may wish to have a shorter stance. You're gonna lift your right, your, your left arm up, stretch it up, turn a little bit and then take the arm outside your right knee. This is where you can pause. You're pulling in with the lower belly. It's that secret deep place. Every time you exhale, you may notice you twist a little deeper. Now your right hand is gonna move in a way so that your thumb is gonna sneak into your right hip crease and you're gonna push all of the flesh downward towards the earth. And that may help you get in there more deeply because of that deep external rotation in the hip, it narrows the pelvis and gives you some length in the side of the body. Now, if it feels good, you may surprise yourself that you can get your left hand down to the mat. Now, belly in again, stretch through the heart, stretch through uh, the base of the throat, center of throat, center of mind. Keep squeezing the buttocks, the pelvis stays steady, and you're here for three. And two. And one. And inhale to release, come back to center. With both hands down, you're gonna lengthen your stance. Walk your back leg back, your front leg forward, come down into as deep or as long of a stride as you want for lizard posture. You can even, some of you can probably wrap your arm around the front leg. If you wanna come all the way into splits, that is also fine to find a place where you can keep this front leg squeezing into your shoulder. And surrender completely. And you have to use your muscles and create some type of tone in them it's just going to um, be integral to the position so that you don't plop over to one side or the other. Move slowly here, breathing into tight tissue. Push your feet down, push your front foot forward. Press your back foot down and back. And that'll help you be able to fire your quadricep muscles so that maybe the hamstring muscles will release a bit more. Belly in, dropping the head once again, and you're here for three. And two. And one. And release. Slowly come up. Walk your hands in. Walk your back knee in. Come into table position. Walk your knees forward from table. Cross your ankles and transition onto your buttocks and onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. <clears throat> Now place your right ankle on top of your left knee for Suchi Ranjasana. 
the thread the needle you can wrap through to the shin or the thigh whatever your range of motion affords you take a deep breath in and exhale and lift the head and pull this package in close towards your chest I don't find you balancing on kidneys with sacrum off of the floor. See if you can pull that in as you lower the head. And you're here for three. And two. And one. Now release and switch sides. So left ankle on top of right. Pull this package in. You can reach through for the shin or the thigh, depending on your ability. You want that knee to be moving away from your shoulder. Take a deep breath in, exhale, lift the head. Pull this package in, see so if you can be balancing on your ribs. And then slowly bring the head down to the mat. Lengthening through that side body. You want that left hip crease moving away from you. And you're here for three. And two. And one. And release. Okay, happy baby. Grab both feet. Both knees are bent. Bring the soles of your feet together. For happy baby. Now, if it's a if it's a challenge for happy baby, keep your feet apart, right? Knees are bent. Grab your feet, work your knees down towards the mat. If that's a little more doable, bring your feet together. Take a breath, exhale, lift your head. Bring your hands, palms together, near the pinky toe edge of your feet. And bring the feet towards the head. You can drop your head, and you're here for three. And two. And then one. Now release. Okay, knees together for our final two twists. So drop the knees down to the right. You could use this right elbow to help you lift the ribs and the waistline away from the mat, twisting more thoroughly to the left. Coming into a deep spinal twist. If you want even deeper, just simply extend the bottom leg into a straightened position. Notice the open quality to the left lung, left chest, left shoulder, all connected. The chest externally, the lung internally, the shoulder joint, is tethered to it all internally. Now inhale, come back to center. Side two, you're gonna drop your knees over to the left. Use your left elbow to help you lift your ribs and waistline. Move it in a way so that you can twist more thoroughly to the right. And if you want deeper, extend your bottom leg. Squeeze your buttocks just a little bit. Keep some tone and stability in the pelvis. As you turn your gaze to the right. Opening that right chest. It blends into the shoulder. Shoulder connected internally to the lung organ. Feel the lung organ expanding three-dimensionally to the front, to the side, and to the back as you breathe into this reclining twist. Jatara Parivartanasana, deep turning in the abdomen. And now inhale, arrive back at center. Hug your knees into your chest. Stretch your legs out. Short Shavasana. Close your eyes. Let the body relax heavy.
Now let it be nourished by the inhale. The inner body becomes brightly radiant. It shimmers with tejase, the Sanskrit word for the scintillating glitter and shining of the inner body, the inner soul. Take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, be even heavier in form. Tension falling, rolling off of you, soaking and sinking down into the earth, down into the mat or the floor. Draw in another full breath. Exhale with a sigh. Bend the knees. Roll to your right. And rise up slowly to a seated form. And draw your hands together at the heart. May we be guided through our practices. May we be protected as we do this work and move back into our personal life of relationships and work, and joys and adventure. May we always be reminded that this life is sacred because it is tethered so deeply to the soul self, that which is comprised of deep wisdom, the highest in intelligence, compassion, and the most auspicious bliss. Deep breath in for Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.